Welcome back! The introduction of Swift UI on iOS and Jetpack Compose on Android has brought us into a new era of declarative UI. But how has app design evolved? What are the modern architecture patterns developers use today? And what has changed since the old UI kit days? In this video, we'll talk about that and see if Viper is still a viable option. Before Swift UI, developers primarily built iOS apps using UIKit. During that time, two major architectural patterns emerged. Model View Controller, the classic approach separated data, UI, and control logic. However, in practice, controllers often become overly complex, hence the infamous anti-pattern, Massive View Controller. To combat MVC's pitfalls, MVVM moved much of the business logic and state management into dedicated view models. This separation made code more testable and maintainable, despite some added complexity in binding data between models and views. In UIKit, we often had to use KVO or third-party binding libraries to bridge the gap between model changes and UI updates. These challenges set the stage for Swift UI a framework designed from the ground up to work with a declarative and reactive approach. Swift UI naturally integrates patterns like MVVM into its DNA, reducing boilerplate and streamlining state management. Today, MVVM is the most widely used architecture pattern for Swift UI apps because it aligns perfectly with the framework's state driven design. Here's how declarative syntax and unidirectional data flow. In SwiftUI, you describe the view as a function of its state. When that state changes, the framework automatically updates the UI. This removes the need for manual UI updates. Property wrappers and data binding. SwiftUI leverages property wrappers such as state, binding, absurd object, and state object to simplify state management. When properties marked with at published in a view model change, the associated view updates automatically. Reactive integration with Combine and Swift concurrency. SwiftUI works seamlessly with Combine and Swift's async await syntax, allowing you to build a reactive, asynchronous data flow into your apps. This makes MVVM not only simpler, but also more robust in handling real-world app complexities. By integrating these modern concepts, SwiftUI refines MVVM into a pattern that's leaner, more responsive, and easier to maintain. Beyond MVVM, modern iOS apps use various architectures to fit different project needs. Let's examine four key design patterns with detailed breakdowns. Viper was originally designed to enforce a strict separation of concerns by dividing responsibilities among its components – view, interactor, presenter, entity, and router. This structure worked exceptionally well for complex apps built with imperative frameworks like UIKit. Viper is great if you love structure. It's also great if you love writing five times more files than you thought you would. With SwiftUI, the way data flows from the model to the view is transformed by its declarative design and built-in state management. In this context, the traditional role of the presenter as a mediator that transforms data for the view is redundant. That's why the canonical implementation of Viper doesn't make sense with SwiftUI. Instead of discarding Viper entirely, some developers have adopted the pattern for SwiftUI. SwiftUI naturally aligns with MVVM, where the view model takes on responsibilities similar to those of the presenter. As a result, some teams merge or reassign Viper's responsibilities when working with SwiftUI. For example, the presenter's duties might be absorbed by a view model that directly interacts with SwiftUI views, while the interactor and router continue to handle business logic and navigation. While SwiftUI's design reduces the need for a distinct presenter layer, it doesn't render the Viper architecture completely useless. But it's definitely not the top choice anymore. Next up, clean architecture, popularized by Robert Martin, 
emphasizes a layered approach to separating concerns and keeping your code base scalable and testable. However, it intentionally leaves component definitions and naming conventions open-ended. This flexibility has led to various adaptations in the iOS ecosystem, some tailored for UIKit and others designed with SwiftUI in mind. Even though SwiftUI introduces a fresh declarative approach to building UIs, it doesn't diminish the relevance of clean architecture. Instead, its principles continue to provide a solid foundation for creating a maintainable, testable, and resilient code across different UI paradigms. Here's a simple diagram of how to adapt clean architecture for SwiftUI. Most apps can be split into three layers – presentation, business logic, and data access. The view is a SwiftUI view that shows data and has no business logic. It simply reflects the current state. User actions, like tapping a button or when the view appears, trigger events that are sent to interactors. The state and business logic, called app state and interactors, are made available to the view through SwiftUI's app environment. An interactor holds the business logic for a specific view or a group of views. Together with app state, it forms a layer that is separate from the user interface and external resources. Interactors do not keep any internal state. They rely on an injected app state object, usually passed in through the constructor. They should be wrapped in a protocol so that during testing a fake version can be used instead. When an interactor gets a request to perform work, like fetching data or doing a calculation, it does not return the data directly. Instead, it sends the result to the app state or to a binding provided by the view. The binding is useful when the result belongs only to a single view and doesn't need to be shared across the app. The app state is the only part that must be an object, typically an observable object. Alternatively, it can be a struct wrapped in a current value subject from combine. Much like Redux, App State acts as a single source of truth for your app. It holds everything – user data, authentication tokens, navigation details like selected tabs or presented sheets, and system status – whether the app is active or in the background. App State is independent – it does not know about the other layers or contain any business logic. A repository serves as an abstract gateway for reading and writing data. It gives you access to a single data service, whether that's a web server or a local database. For example, if your app connects to its own backend, uses the Google Maps API and writes to a local database, you might have three repositories – one for each web API and one for database operations. Like interactors, a repository is stateless. It only handles data-related tasks and does not know about the app state or the views. The real repository should be hidden behind a protocol, so that interactors can use a fake version during tests. By using clean architecture in this way, you keep a clear separation of concerns, while fully taking advantage of SwiftUI's modern reactive design. The composable architecture often abbreviated as TCA, takes its inspiration from Redux and functional programming principles, and was adapted for Swift by the team at Point3. Actually, it's not the only Redux adaptation, there are others, for instance, ReSwift, which is also popular. TCA provides a robust, predictable structure for managing state and side effects in your apps. The main idea behind this architecture is to maintain a single source of truth and ensure unidirectional data flow, which simplifies state management and makes the app more predictable. Core concepts here. State – a single source of truth representing the entire app or a feature's current data. Actions – user interactions or events that trigger state changes. Reducer – a pure function that takes the current state and an action, then returns a new state. This makes reasoning about state transitions straightforward and testable. Environment encapsulates external dependencies, such as network services or databases needed to perform side effects. And effects, handled in a predictable way, effects are operations like API calls that may asynchronously produce new actions to update the state. 
In this setup, SwiftUI views observe a centralized store. When the user interacts with the view, an action is sent to the store. The reducer processes that action, updating the state in a pure, predictable manner. Any side effects, such as network requests, are managed by the environment and, upon completion, feed new actions back into the reducer. This unidirectional flow makes debugging and testing much simpler. Composable architecture fits naturally with SwiftUI's declarative nature. The state-driven updates in SwiftUI perfectly align with TCA's single source of truth, ensuring that your UI always reflects the current state. Now, let's talk about MVVMC. This architecture pattern builds on MVVM by introducing a dedicated coordinator to manage navigation and flow. While SwiftUI offers built-in navigation components like navigation stack, complex apps may require more flexible routing. So, why use a coordinator? First, separation of concerns. It prevents view models from becoming cluttered with navigation logic. Second, centralized navigation provides a single point of control especially useful for complex flows or deep linking. And third, improved testability. It decouples navigation from business logic, making view models easier to test. How it works with Swift UI? The view model handles UI state and business logic. When navigation is needed, the view model informs the coordinator. Then the coordinator updates the navigation state, triggering a Swift UI transition. So, MVVMC enhances MVVM by introducing a dedicated coordinator to manage navigation, keeping view models focused on business logic and UI state. All right, as we conclude our exploration, let's highlight some best practices for modern iOS architecture. One, follow a clear architectural pattern, NVVM, clean, TCA, etc., based on project complexity. Two, use dependency injection with native tools or libraries like Swinject. Three, Keep business logic separate from the UI layer, avoid putting logic inside Swift UI views. 4. Use modular architecture with Swift Package Manager to separate concerns and improve scalability. 5. Favor composition over inheritance to create reusable and testable components. 6. Minimize state duplication, centralize state management in view models for NVIDIA or in a store for a composable architecture. 7. Leverage, combine, or async await to handle asynchronous data flow in a structured way. 8. Use unidirectional data flow to keep state predictable, especially in TCA or Redux-style architectures. 9. Separate ephemeral UI state from app-wide state to prevent unnecessary re-renders in SwiftUI. 10. Avoid embedding navigation logic in view models. Use coordinators or TCA's navigation stack pattern. 11. Use URL session with async await for networking or adopt libraries like Lamafire if needed. Async await made networking so much cleaner. If you're still using completion handlers, it's time for an intervention. 12. Separate networking logic into dedicated services that interact with view models or use cases. And 13. Use DTOs, data transfer objects, to avoid coupling API models directly to business logic. Following these best practices makes your application scalable, testable, and ready for future iOS innovations. Today we've talked about the evolution of iOS architectures from traditional MVC and MVVM to Swift UI's declarative and reactive paradigm. We've delved into modern patterns like Viper, Composable Architecture, Clean Architecture, and MVVMC. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. If you'd like me to make a deep dive video on one of these architectures, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and have a great day.